Hi, welcome. This is Clement Eddy Lector. In this uh, video, I will show you how to use the uh, configurable logic block available on the uh, Arduino Nano Every board to create a WS2812B uh, NeoPixel addressable RGB LED driver without bit banning. The Arduino Nano Every board is the cheapest Arduino board available. It has the uh, nano form factor, uh, meaning that it is small, and it has an 80 mega 4809 microcontroller, meaning that it is not 100% compatible with the Arduino Uno, uh, which has an 80 mega 328 uh, MCU. However, uh, thanks to some uh, software translation layers, it can be almost 100% compatible. The compatibility issue is not really a problem unless you want to use a library or so that includes assembly code or does direct register access. In other words, a library that goes outside the boundaries defined by Arduino. The only incompatible thing is that the Nano Avery does not have PWM on pin 11. It has only 5 PWM outputs instead of the 6 on the Uno. On the other hand, it has 50% more program memory, it has 3 times more RAM, and it has four serial ports instead of just one. Note that my remark about PWM is inaccurate, as the PWM channels can be remapped to other pins, and then you can have up to six channels. So basically, the Arduino Nano Every can do everything a Uno can do, but smaller and cheaper. Furthermore, the 80 Mega 4809 on the Nano Every has some peripherals that are not available on the Uno at all, like an event system and a custom configurable logic block. The event system lets peripherals send signals to each other without needing the CPU to get involved. This allows for faster and more predictable response without calling interrupt service routines. The Custom Configurable Logic, or CCL, is a kind of a micro FPGA consisting of four lookup tables, or LUTs, with the three inputs each. Each LUT has a glitch filter and an edge detector, and two LUTs together can drive a flip-flop. Each LUT can implement any Boolean function of three variables. The inputs for the LUTs can be physical pins, but also signals inside the chip, like the output of the analog comparator, or a timer, or the TX signal of a UART, the output of another LUT, or even its own output. It is not possible to connect everything you like, but with a bit of cleverness, a lot can be done. With the CCL, it is for instance possible to multiplex the TX outputs of UART 0, 1 and 2, or create a burst signal for an infrared remote control by combining a timer with the SPI output. The CCL can also be simple glue logic, allowing you to maybe simplify a circuit. The CCL block is not unique for the AT Mega 4809. It is available in other microchip products as well. And there are a few application notes showing how you can use it. Even though they do not target the 4809 specifically, the principles remain valid. An application note that I found particularly interesting is one entitled Core Independent Nightlight using CCL. This is a design for a nightlight with a pair of motion sensor and buttons to adjust the light intensity and color. The light itself is a matrix of WS2812B addressable RGB LEDs, also known as NeoPixels. Core independent means that the device does most of its work without soliciting the CPU, the core. The high-speed bitstream for the WS2812B LEDs is created by the CCL that combines the SPI output with a timer output in a clever way. CPU-intensive bit banging is avoided altogether, and the LED matrix simply looks like a spy device to the CPU. It is a pretty cool design, actually. This application note targets the 80 Tiny 1617 and not the 80 Mega 4809, but they have similar peripherals. Most of the porting of this code to the Arduino Nano Every therefore consists of carefully reading the data sheets and applying changes to registers where needed. Note that I ported only the NeoPixel part and not the complete Nightlight application. Also, as the operating principles and technical motivations are clearly described in the application note, I will not repeat them here. Just open the link from the description below. On the AT Tiny1617, the clever NeoPixel stuff is done with a SPI, timer TCA0 and a LUT. These peripherals all exist on the AT Mega4809, except that the LUTs have different input signals. The AT Tiny example uses TCA0's channel 2, a W02. On the 4809, this signal can only be routed to a LUT's input number 2. 
However, this is also the only LUT input that accepts the SPI SCK signal. As we need SCK, we must switch to another timer channel. Luckily, the other two LUT inputs allow for WO0 and WO1, so we have two options. We also need the SPI's MOSI signal, which can be routed to either input 0 or input 1 of a LUT. I chose LUT input 1 for MOSI, leaving me with the TCA0 channel WO0 on LUT input 0. Had I put MOSI on LUT input 0, then I should have used TCA0 channel WO1 instead. Besides the fact that some of the 80 mega 4809 registers and bits have slightly different names compared to the 80 tiny 1617, this signal swapping is quite straightforward. However, we must also take Arduino specifics into account, as the example application does not rely on Arduino. The Arduino Nano every form factor makes that not every MCU pin is available on the extension headers. Looking closely at the pins, we see that the outputs of LUT0 and LUT3 are shared with the SCL signal of the I2C bus that we would like to keep, of course. Only the output of LUT1 can be mapped to a free Arduino pin, D4. Another Arduino Nano every issue is that the TCA0 channels W00, W01 and W02 are used for the PWM signals on D9, D10 and D5 respectively, and we don't want to lose any of them if we can avoid it. Also, messing with the TCA0 interferes with the delay and millis functions of Arduino, even though they use timer TCB3. This is because TCB3 is set to use the same 250 kHz clock as TCA0. But we need a timer running at 1 MHz. Now if we can't use the TCA0, then can we use one of the TCB timers? The AT Mega 4009 has four of them, three of which are used by Arduino. TCB0 and TCB1 are used for PWM on Arduino pins D6 and D3 respectively, and TCB3 is used for timekeeping with millis and delay. TCB2, however, is free, and so we can claim it. Unfortunately, a TCB2 can only be routed to input 2 of a LUT, the only LUT input that also accepts the SPI SEK signal that we absolutely need. Does this mean that we are stuck? No, we are not. The solution I came up with was by adding a second LUT. As the output of a LUT can connect to any input of another LUT, you can use it as a router. The only constraint here is that the two LUTs must be consecutive, and the output must be of the higher numbered LUT. This meant that I had to use LUT2 for this, as its output had to go to LUT1. LUT2 does nothing except passing the TCB2 signal to its output, which is then routed to input 0 of LUT1. Now the WS2812B NeoPixel bitstream generator is in place without interfering with the Arduino API. However, there remains one last hurdle to overcome, and which concerns the MCU's clock frequency. Note that the AT Tiny 1617 example runs from a 20 MHz clock divided by 2, so 10 MHz. I haven't tried the example, but we may assume that it works. According to the Arduino website and the Nano Every's packaging, its clock frequency is also 20 MHz. In reality, however, the Nano Every runs from 16 MHz, not 20. A 16 MHz system clock allows a SPI SEK signal of 1 MHz. In our setup, a Logic 1 signal for the WS2812B LED corresponds to one period of the SPI SEK signal. This has a 50% duty cycle, which is almost allowed by the specifications of the WS2812B if you take the tolerances into account. However, 1 MHz means a pulse duration of 500 nanoseconds, which is less than the minimum allowed pulse duration of 650 nanoseconds for the WS2812B. If we slow down the MCU, we can meet the LED specifications. Slowing down the MCU can be achieved on the fly thanks to the System Oscillator's calibration register. It may depend on your chip, but my MCU allowed a lot of control up as well as down. Supposing that it defaults to somewhere around the middle of the 7-bit value contained in this register, dividing it by 2 should always be possible. Doing so, I found that this resulted in an approximately 25% speed decrease. Just enough to make things work. Slowing down the processor has, of course, an influence on the speed of all other things, but as it is a constant change, you can compensate for it in your code. 
If you are careful, especially with interrupt-driven communications, you don't want the baud rate to change in the middle of a communication, uh, you can decrease the speed only during spike transmissions so that other parts of the code are not affected. While preparing this video, I suddenly had a bright idea. Instead of slowing down the MCU, why not try to delay the falling edges of the bitstream to make the pulses a bit longer? A 100 nanosecond delay might do the trick. Therefore, I added this uh, RC delay network to the bitstream and after some tweaking, I got it to work. A 470 picofarad capacitor with a 200 to 500 ohm resistor in parallel did the trick. I settled for 390 ohms, a value in between. The diet ensures that rising edges are not delayed. With this little network, the LED driver works at full speed. In this video I showed you how you can use the core independent capabilities of the 80 mega 4809 microcontroller, the one used on the Arduino Nano every board. Its custom configurable logic allowed combining the SPI, SDK and MOSI signals with a PWM signal to obtain a signal compatible with a WS2812B addressable LED or nail pixel. Now, instead of making the processor bitbang this custom protocol on a pin, it has become a basic SPI peripheral, saving a lot of computational resources. Ok, that's it. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and uh, tap or click the bell button. Thank you for watching.